Did you know influencer gifts are usually taxable? I work with hundreds of online business owners and resellers, and many of them have large audiences on Instagram, YouTube, and other social media channels. And as you grow an audience, you inevitably start getting emails from companies that want you to promote their products. The simplest exchange involves the company providing the influencer or content creator with the free product, and the content creator then does some type of promotion, like an unboxing of the product, a review, or content with them using the product. So even though the content creator didn't have to pay for the item, was it really free? And what are the tax implications? Applications. Hey, my name is Mark Tu, and I'm a CPA and former online seller who specializes in helping resellers and online businesses with taxes and with growing their businesses profitably. In general, gifts are considered to be tax-free to the recipient. So when your grandma gives you $1,000 for graduation or your parents give you money to help with the down payment on a house, those are considered gifts and you don't have to pay tax on that income. So what about when a company sends you a $900 watch? Is that a tax-free gift? Well, if there are strings attached, like if the company is sending it to you in exchange for you doing a promotion, that's not technically a gift. And you would include that $900 market value of the watch as income on your tax return. Just remember, I don't make the rules, I just teach them and if there are ethical ways to get around them. And one thing you can do to reduce that tax burden a bit is if you had any expenses related to that promotion, you could add those as deductions on your tax return. Like if you bought some cleaner or a little display case or had video production costs, you could include those expenses as deductions. I recently saw a video where someone said that since the market value may decline over time, you'll report the reduced market value when it comes time to do your taxes. That is unfortunately incorrect. The value of the product should be reported as income based on its fair market value at the time it was received. I saw another person say that you only have to include the value on your taxes if you receive a 1099, which they're supposed to send you if the total value exceeds $600. This is also incorrect. You should report the value of the items as income regardless of whether or not you receive a 1099. Now it used to be all on the same form, but there are now two main types of 1099 sent to contractors and self-employed individuals for compensation reporting. You have form 1099 NEC, which stands for non-employment compensation, and the 1099 MISS or miscellaneous. That 1099 NEC is the form that should be used to report payments of $600 or more to contractors for services performed as part of their business. These wages are typically paid to a self-employed person and are subject to self-employment tax. The 1099 MISS is a form that reports various types of income other than non-employee compensation like rent payments, royalties, prizes, and other income payouts. The problem here is that the company doesn't always know if the payouts they're sending are part of your business or not. So don't let the form you receive dictate whether or not those earnings are part of your business and subject to self-employment tax. If I'm a content creator and promoting products I receive for free as part of the normal course of my business, that income is going to be included included with your regular business income and subject to self-employment tax, unless of course you have an S corp, which you can learn more about here. If you don't have a business, I don't have the intent to make a profit, and I just have a hobby of trying to promote good information in the world through, let's say the Amazon Vine program, that could be considered as hobby income, which is regular income subject to income tax, but is not subject to self-employment tax. One thing that happens sometimes is Amazon might send you the wrong form. So they pay out $2,000 worth of product to you during the year, and then they send you a 1099 NEC for $2,000. Now you have a problem because the IRS is gonna to expect to see that $2,000 on your Schedule C, which is the business tax form. Rather than try to get Amazon to send the correct form, just do a simple workaround to satisfy the IRS computers and then correctly report the income. So what you would do is list the $2,000 on your Schedule C as income and then deduct it back out as an other expense on the same form so that the taxable income shows a zero. That saves you from being subject to self-employment tax and now you you just need to report it as other income on your tax form 1040. Remember, with hobby income, it's not subject to self-employment tax, but it is still subject to regular income tax, and you can't deduct any of the related expenses like you can with a business. Also note that these 1099s are different from the 1099K, which is the form the platforms send that show the gross receipts received for the sales you've made in your selling businesses. And I've got other videos on those. Back to receiving free stuff. If a company sends you personally an item to use for personal use with no expectation of promotion, it might not be considered taxable, but this is more rare and typically not the case for influencers or content creators. Keeping detailed records is important. Document the date received product description, fair market value, and any related expenses. This helps with accurate tax reporting and in case of an audit. In summary, you have to be as careful with free stuff as you do with the free tax advice that's out there. So tread carefully. Check out the links below so I can help you optimize your tax situation so you can ditch the anxiety and focus on building your business profitably. Mm -hmm.